Let's have a look at another income statement question now. Harry Knight, this one came from the ACCN2 paper for January 2012. So we've got um, some information up here. So it's always important that we read what, what's going on at the top here because often it contains some quite crucial um, information. Sometimes it doesn't, but more often than not, there's something here that might be a clue. So it says that Harry Knight opened his business on the 1st of October 2010 with capital of 21,000. He has drafted an income statement for his first year of trading, which contains errors. So we know there are mistakes in this. Um, and if we just glance our eyes across here, we can see a few things that don't belong there. So drawings obviously would never be on the income statement. They're just included in the statement of financial position. And fixtures at cost. Fixtures are obviously non-current assets. So anything that says at cost is always gonna be a non-current asset. So non-current assets do not belong in the income statement, but any depreciation or profit or loss on disposal does belong in the income statement. The other thing to note here is this doesn't appear to be any opening inventory, but if we just remind ourselves of what it set up here, it's his first year of trading. So we wouldn't expect any opening inventory. So we don't wanna waste time looking for something that doesn't belong in there anyway. So at the moment he's come up with a net loss of 49,529, but obviously we already know that that's gonna be um, reduced by just removing the drawings and the fixtures at cost. Um, we've got some additional information as well that was overlooked when preparing the draft income statement. Um, so these are seven pieces of additional information that we need to deal with. So we need to adjust the figures up here. So my trusty calculator at the ready, which I've put under a lamp. So hopefully the uh, display might be a little bit brighter um, now. So let's just start with this then. So um, the purchase of fixtures costing 8,500 had been included in the purchases figure. Okay, so we need to take 8,500 off of the purchases and we actually need to add it to this figure here. So 8,500 is gonna need to be added to the fixtures at cost. Now, obviously we're gonna be removing those from the income statement. We don't want those in there, but when it comes to calculating the depreciation, we need to take those into account. Okay, so that's number one dealt with. Goods to the value of 3895 were taken for Harry Knight's own use. So we need to take 3895 off the purchases figure and we'll be adding that to the drawings. So the 3895 will go into to drawings. Um, we're not going to need those because we're only required to do an income statement for this question. Okay. Um, 30th of September 2011, Harry carried out a physical stock take. Some goods which had originally cost 2800 had been damaged. These goods could be repaired at a cost of 580 and could then be sold for 3200 Okay, so the original cost of the goods, which has been included in this closing inventory figure, was 2800 What we need to find, though, is the NRV, the net realisable value. So what we're likely to achieve for them, the selling price, the new selling price, minus anything we've got to uh, pay out to get them fixed. So if that net realisable value is lower than the cost figure, we're going to need to reduce inventory by the difference. So if we take the 3,200 and we minus the 580, so 3,000, oops, 3,200 minus 580 means the net realizable value is 2,620. Well, the original cost was 2,800. So effectively, we're minusing the 2,800 and adding the 2,620. So removing the original cost and then reinstating it at the net realizable value. Or we can just simply deduct the difference, which is £180 from the closing inventory. So we're going to take 180 away from closing inventory. OK, so this is where there's a problem with the inventory. We can't remember the uh, prudence concept says that wherever there's any doubt about the value of something, we have to err on the side of caution and record it at its lower or lowest value. OK, so that's what we're doing here. Uh, wages of 399 were owing. So we've got an accrual that we need to add into the wages expense up there. Um, and then the insurance of 489 was paid in advance. Now, insurance of 489 prepaid, we need to take that away. OK, so that's these dealt with. Um, Harry has been advised that depreciation on fixtures should be provided. He will use the reducing balance method at a rate of 33 and a third percent per annum. Now, watch out when they give you 33 and a third percent. Don't try and do that on your calculator. Find the cost if it's um, straight line depreciation or find the net uh, book value if it's reducing balance depreciation and then quite simply divide it by three. So in this case, we've got the cost is 12,500 plus the 8,500 that had been um, misposted up here. It had gone into 
purchases. So an error of principle had occurred. So cost is 21,000, as I said, divide it by three, and that gives you 7,000 depreciation. That's gonna go in the income statement, okay? So don't try and do 33 and a third, because people always put things like 33.3, .3, they don't put enough threes, because it actually would be 33.333 recurring percent. Um, so just to err on the side of caution, the easiest way to do it is just to divide by three. Okay, so as I said, find in this case, um, we don't need to find the net realizable value because it's the first year. So it's just all the fixtures that have been purchased divided by three. Next year, though, um, assuming he didn't buy any more assets, then it would be on the net, um, sorry, net book value, the 21,000 minus the 7,000, so 14,000, again, divided by three. Um, Harry's also been advised that he should make a provision for doubtful debts of 5% of trade receivables, trade receivables at the 30th of September 2011 were 18,760. So again, we're not told about any irrecoverable debts. So we've just got to take the 18,760 times that by 5%. That's 938 pounds. And that's going to be included as an expense up in the um, income statement. So we can now start to prepare the income statement. Don't forget to give it a title. You need to say what it is. So the title of the document, whose it is. So the person, in this case, Harry Knight, and what period of time it's for. So it's an income statement. It's for the year ended and then the date written in full. If it's a statement of financial position, it will be as at, but still the date written in full. So the income statement, we only really need two columns. Nothing had changed with the sales revenue. So we can just put revenue straight in there. So sales revenue. 104896. Um, purchases, we had some adjustments to that. So purchases were, remember there was no opening inventory because um, it's a new business. So the original purchases were 72468. We're taking away eight and a half thousand um, for the misposted, or not the misposted, the error of principle that had occurred, the uh, fittings or fixtures that had gone in to purchases by mistake. And then we're also taking off the 3895, which was the goods for own use. So purchases are now down to 60,073. And if you remember the closing inventory was also reduced because we had 180 was the difference between the cost of the um, inventory that had been damaged and its net realizable value. So what it could be sold for. So we need to knock 180 pounds off of the value of closing inventory, so that's 14,502. So cost of sales, gonna be the difference between those two. Seven, three, that's gonna be 45,571, and that's gonna leave us with a gross profit, 59,325. Make sure that's labeled. So make sure sales revenue is clearly labelled, cost of sales is clearly labelled, gross profit, because usually there's going to be marks available for, for presentation of some description, so labelling, certainly. We've got no other income here, we haven't got a reduction in anything, we haven't made a profit on the sale of non-current assets, we haven't received, there's nothing that says received here, past tense, um, meaning you know income that's been received. So we can just take the expenses off, so we say less expenses, and then we can just list them. Um, pretty much as they're given there. So the wages we had um, 20,748 plus 399, so 20748 plus 399. So the wages 21,147. Um, drawings, obviously, we don't need to include that because drawings don't belong there. They go on the statement of financial position in the capital account. The rent, nothing had changed there, so we can just pop that straight in 5,200. Insurance, we had a prepayment, so it was 3481 that had been paid during the year, but 489 of that related to next year. So the insurance is 2,992. Um, we had the general expenses, stick those in. So general expenses, nothing had changed, I don't think, so that was still 2,786. But let's not forget we had some depreciation that we calculated down here. So we had 7,000 of depreciation. So it's depreciation on fixtures. Remember, if you've got different types of depreciation, it makes sense to list them separately. Um, so it's easy for the examiner to pick up your calculations. So 7,000 pounds of depreciation and then a provision for doubtful debts. 
It's an increase that goes in as an expense. Let's see if I can fit it in for the doubtful debts, £938. Okay, so if we add up all of those, 21147, 5200, 2992, 2786, 7000, 938. So that gives us a total for our expenses of 40,063, which we can clearly see is going to leave Harry with a profit for the year. So no more doom and gloom for Harry. He's gone from a loss of 49,000, probably thinking about closing his business down, um, to a reasonably healthy profit of 19,262. Okay, so that's how you do Harry Knight. Thanks very much for watching.